the dizzying view from the 24th floor of the luxury residential building mesmerized Anna. The girl couldn't take her eyes off this fabulous beauty for several minutes. The panoramic window extended from floor to ceiling on the entire wall of the huge apartment. The views of the entire city could be seen through this window. There was a futuristic landscape on the right, the same skyscrapers with facades made of glass, shining in the sun. And older houses were on the left, nestled amongst the dense crowns of trees. Cars were passing somewhere below, they seemed like toys from such a height. All the hustle and bustle seemed to be somewhere far beyond these walls. Anna sighed and forced herself to return to the reality. She turned around and looked at the scope of work for today. She was glad that the owner of the apartment preferred minimalism in the interior and didn't like to cook, so the stove was perfectly clean. But he had a lot of expensive alcohol. Many restaurants would probably envy him. There were about a hundred bottles of various drinks, as well as different corkscrews and glasses. Most likely a young guy who liked to throw noisy parties lived here. But it's none of Anna's business. Her job was to clean the apartment and leave. She has been working at the cleaning company for only two weeks and has not yet gotten used to the environment of luxurious apartments and houses. Jessica's relative helped her to get a job there. Jessica was the landlady of the apartment Anna had been renting for two years. This elderly woman saw this pretty 19-year-old girl who had come from a small village to the big city and at first she felt distrust and even contempt for her. However, the new tenant pleasantly surprised Jessica. She turned out to be very neat and modest. Anna spent all her evenings with her textbooks and hardly ever went out. Jessica liked to be bossy and criticize, but a tender and vulnerable soul was clearly visible through this contrived strictness. She reminded the girl of her mom. Anna cherished the warmest memories of the time when she and her mother lived together in a small house. Her grandparents had died long ago, and she barely remembered her father. Her mom told her that he had left her for another woman when Anna was a baby. He paid child support on time, but for so many years, he never even called. Despite everything, the girl never heard anything bad about him from her mother, and the family album still had many photos of a serious man who was Anna's father. But in fact, he was just a stranger. When Anna was 15, her mother suddenly fell ill. At first, the girl took her illness as an ordinary malaise. Besides, her mum pretended like everything was fine because she didn't want to distract her daughter from her studies. Anna suspected something bad only when a lot of medicines appeared in their house and her mother almost stopped going to work. Now, there were different pills, bottles of mixtures and even syringes on her bedside table instead of books. She lay in bed more and more often for her strength was almost gone and looked at her daughter in a different way as if it was the last time she would see her. This look alarmed the girl. Mom, what's going on? She couldn't stand it anymore and asked. Everything is fine, sweetie, don't worry. I'll get some rest and feel better soon, Mom replied, looking sadly at Anna. You are saying that all the time, but you don't even have the energy to get up from bed. The woman sighed quietly. It was probably time to confess. Sweetie, I need to tell you something. I have cancer, she said and immediately noticing the tears in her daughter's eyes, she hastened to add, but the doctors say it's curable. I'm getting treatment, I'll be fine. She froze indecisively as if weighing the pros and cons, but then reached over to the nightstand and took a piece of paper. Here, take it. It's your dad's phone number. If anything happens to me, call him and ask him for help. After all, he's your father. Those words made it hard for Anna to breathe. What could happen to you? Her lips were trembling and tears were already flowing from her eyes. Everything will be fine, her mother reassured her with a smile and took her hand affectionately. I gave you this number just in case, but everything's going to be okay. After this conversation, the girl's life changed. She almost never left her sick mother's side. At school, she only attended a few classes and only because her mother insisted on it. The terrible disease took away the last strength. Soon the woman's condition worsened and she was taken to the hospital. She never returned from there. Anna could not believe that her mother was gone. Even the sight of her dead body could not convince the girl that her mother had passed away. No, it can't be, the girl mentally told herself. This is some kind of mistake. Maybe it's just a nightmare. I need to wake up. Anna's neighbor Lily helped to organize the funeral. 
She took care of everything, seeing that Anna was completely lost. The elderly woman felt sorry for the unfortunate orphan and said, Poor child, why is fate punishing you like this? For Anna, the funeral was like a dream. She hardly understood what was going on. She just silently followed her neighbor, struggling to move her legs. After her mother's death, she dialed her father's number as promised. Deep in her heart, there was hope that there was another person who would immediately come to her and protect her from all the troublous and sorrows. Who is it? A harsh female voice answered. Hello, I need William, the girl said. The woman immediately inquired. Why? I guess my father has a very jealous wife, Anna thought, and immediately replied, I am his daughter, Anna. Anna heard some rustling and muffled whispering. Finally, a man said cautiously, Anna, hello, what's wrong? My mum died. Oh my gosh, what happened? She's been very sick, Anna informed. She didn't want to give any details now, because she could literally feel her father's wife listening curiously into their conversation. Should I send you some money? Anna's father asked. That was not what the girl expected to hear, but she decided to fulfill her mother's last wish. My mum said you could shelter me, so they wouldn't send me to an orphanage. The man fell silent, but Anna could hear some whispering. The woman was indignant. Are you out of your mind? Tell her we don't have enough room for her. The man finally spoke. Anna, how can I shelter you? I have three children. Let me handle my work stuff, and then I'll come and visit you. Do you have the same address? These words struck the girl in the heart. It turned out that he did not consider her his child. Is Anna a stranger to her own father? He kept saying something else, asking about school, but the girl didn't listen. Her last hope vanished. Now she was left all alone in this cruel world. Anna ended up in the orphanage. Her friends had told her a lot of horrible things about the orphanages, but luckily it was better than she expected. The orphanage actually looked like a summer camp, Caretakers and teachers worked diligently. The children were friendly. The only thing that upset her was the fact that no one would take her home. Over time, Anna got used to such a monotonous life, but when she graduated from the orphanage, she was confused. Of course, she was thinking about her future and made some plans, but facing freedom in the harsh adult life, she didn't know what to do. Finally, she could return to her village. Approaching this familiar and dear house, Anna stopped, not believing her eyes. The windows and the front door were open, and the wind fluttered the curtain, just like in her childhood. She saw the silhouette of a woman in the vegetable garden. Anna's heart raced faster. Mom! Mommy! An unrealistic thought flashed through her mind. Trying to breathe quietly and afraid to scare away the apparition, she quietly opened the gate and rushed to the woman. The woman turned to the girl, and a sigh of disappointment escaped from Anna's chest. Mrs. Lily, is that you? The woman looked at Anna in surprise and walked out to meet the girl. My goodness, Anna, you look so grown up. You've become such a beauty. Anna looked silently at the well-tended vegetable garden. Lily spoke quickly as if to justify herself. We've been taking care of your house, Anna. Look, everything looks the same as when you left. I hope you don't mind. The girl entered the house and looked around. Lily had time to clean up the house as well. Anna expected to feel the warm, happy feeling that enveloped her every time she returned home. But the feelings were completely different now. She felt as if she had entered a graveyard. There was some strange energy in the house, and now her home was cold and indifferent to her. But most importantly, she felt lonely in this house now. Anna sat on her bed. Gloomy thoughts flooded her mind, pulling her out of her youthful dreams and bringing her back to the harsh reality. What was she supposed to do now? She used to think she would just come home and continue living here. But now she realized there is no job, no prospects, no relatives in this village. There was no one she could rely on. Lily peeked through the door and called out to the girl, smiling. <laughs> Anna, we're about to have lunch. Why don't you join us? Lily treated Anna like an important guest fussing around her. Anna realized what her neighbor needed. So when the woman cautiously mentioned selling the house, the girl didn't hesitate. Yes, of course, I agree to sell it to you. I want to get away from here. That's the right decision. You should go to the big city. I remember how diligently you studied at school. The neighbor smiled. Lily helped the girl to prepare the necessary paperwork for the house surprisingly quickly. She just wanted to become the owner of this house as soon as possible. 
Anna signed everything without hesitation. She didn't even care that Lily offered less money than the house was worth. All she wanted to do was get out of this village as soon as possible. She packed her modest clothes into a small suitcase, took some of her mum's things, and resolutely headed to the big city to look for her happiness. All her money was in her bank account. Once she got there, she rented an apartment from Jessica, applied to the University of Economics, and had no doubts that she would be accepted. But everything did not work out the way she wanted. She planned to get a scholarship, but she failed. So Anna had to pay for her education. The girl was on her way to the bank to pay the tuition fee, but entering the subway, she received a phone call. A male voice introduced himself as a bank employee and informed her that someone had just tried to withdraw money from her bank account. To prevent it, she had to tell the last three digits on the back of the bank card. Anna didn't even have time to think about what she had heard. She was afraid to lose all her savings. So she immediately told the required numbers. But when she came to the bank, the real bank employees told her that there was no more money in her account and that the phone call had been made by scammers. She gave the scammers access to withdraw the money. The girl tried to call that number, but the automated voice informed her that the dialed number could not accept the call. In despair, she went to the police station. The police officers made fun of her but accepted her report, although there was no hope of finding the criminals. With her head down, Anna slowly walked down the street. She wanted to cry. All her hopes and dreams had been ruined. She would not be able to study this year, and there was nowhere to go back. What could she do in this situation? The only thing left to do was to find a job and apply for university next year. Upset Anna was ready to take any job, so the same day she got a job as a cleaner in the office of a big trading company. She didn't like the job and the salary was miserable, but the girl comforted herself by thinking it wouldn't last long. Soon, she would find a better job and she would definitely go to university. Anna's days became boring and gloomy. The office staff didn't notice the new cleaning lady, or maybe they just didn't consider her a normal person. Everyone was busy with their own work and their own problems. Everyone saw Anna as just a cleaning machine. Why would they talk to a vacuum cleaner or a mop? Only the head of the sales department, Daniel, noticed a new employee. The natural beauty of the girl and her attractive body irresistibly attracted the experienced man. He tried to show his affection for her in every possible way. Anna was flattered by the attention of a respectable man in an expensive suit. It was not like attention from her peers. It was a new level and manners. No one had ever before kissed her hand or opened the door to let her go first. It all seemed to the young girl like a magical fairy tale in which she was a real princess. But Daniel had other plans. He realized that the girl was inexperienced, so he didn't rush. He touched Anna as if accidentally, secretly sent her flowers, sometimes even drove her home in his car. I am so lucky, the girl thought. My mom would definitely like Daniel. In the office, the young man behaved restrainedly. Anna realized that he was the boss and that showing his feelings at work was not appropriate. But in private, he kept talking about his love and hinted at some important things that they had to do. Anna didn't dare to ask him to explain his mysterious phrases because it would ruin the harmony of their relationship. In her mind, she pictured happy scenes of their serene future. A beautiful wedding, Anna in a white dress, two children, a cozy house. She trusted her beloved man, her future husband. Daniel was persistent and soon their relationship reached a new level. They met in an empty apartment. The naive girl was sure that Daniel lived there, even though the boring interior didn't have any photos or personal belongings. Just the most essential pieces of furniture, and an always empty refrigerator. But the time spent with her lover seemed magical to her. Daniel embraced her and whispered what she wanted to hear, that he loved Anna, that he had never loved anyone else so much, that he didn't want to part with her. And Anna naively believed every word. The whole world had turned into pure love. Everything else seemed unimportant. And so a few months passed. For the fourth day in a row, Anna woke up feeling nauseous, there was no point in thinking it was stomach problems. The premonition of some happy changes cheered up the girl. A medical checkup confirmed her suspicions. She was six weeks pregnant. 
Leaving the hospital, Anna stopped, trying to come to her senses. She had to tell Daniel the good news immediately. He would be so happy. Finally, they don't have to hide their relationship anymore. And they can finally get married. He had been hinting at it for a long time. It seemed as if the whole world was rejoicing with her. The sun was sending Anna its warm rays to kiss her face, and a light breeze gently stroked her hair. Anna burst into the office of the father of her future baby. She had never done that before. Daniel raised his eyebrows in surprise and asked, What's wrong? We agreed to meet tomorrow. Anna couldn't control her emotions. A smile lit up her face, and her eyes shone like stars. Daniel, we're going to have a baby. The doctor confirmed it. Seeing the puzzled Daniel's face, the girl thought that she had expected a completely different reaction. Anna, he began slowly, carefully thinking over each word. You see, I didn't plan anything like that. But you said you loved me and wanted to be with me, Anna replied in confusion. The man fell silent, trying to find the right words. The girl didn't understand anything. He repeatedly hinted at a family and a wedding. What could have gone wrong? Tell me honestly, do you love me? She asked. I do, but... Daniel hesitated. But children were not part of my plans. Uh, I'm married. I'm sorry. Anna couldn't believe it. What? What are you talking about? She whispered. She sat down on the chair to keep from fainting. Now some little things about his behavior that had previously confused the girl became clear to her. Why didn't you mention this before? I thought you knew. The man replied, I thought everything was clear between us. He was silent for a while, trying not to look at Anna, and then decisively pulled some money out of his wallet and placed them on the table in front of her. Take it, terminate the pregnancy and buy yourself something nice. Anna stared at the money, unable to utter a word. She gave Daniel herself, both soul and body. But he just gave her a few banknotes, trying to get rid of her. Is this all his love? she wondered. Anna couldn't see him anymore. Daniel suddenly became so disgusting. She ran out of the office, away from the liar, for whom only money and his own desires exist. Jessica met Anna at the entrance to the building and worriedly tried to find out what had happened because her anxious look frightened the woman. But Anna couldn't say a word. She went home and cried until morning. Her heart was broken by the betrayal of the man she trusted. She wanted to fall asleep and never wake up again. But early in the morning, the rays of the merciless sun forced Anna to open her eyes, swollen with tears, to get up and go to work again, to solve her problems and to go on with her life. But the security guard at the entrance of the office building stopped her abruptly. Please go to the HR department, they are waiting for you there. The girl was surprised but went straight to the HR department. A fat lady in glasses saw her and asked indifferently, are you here to write a letter of resignation? Anna was shocked by the unexpected question. I don't know. The security guard told me to come here. Are you Anna? That's right. The boss told me to fire you and give you the last paycheck. No, there must be some mistake, Anna uttered. I don't know the details. He only said to do it as soon as possible. The girl was completely confused with indignation. I'll go to Daniel now and find everything myself. The HR manager took off her glasses and began to wipe them. Then she looked at the confused girl and said quietly, Sweetie, Daniel will not help you. He is the one who told you to fire you. So get your paycheck and find a better job. At home, Anna collapsed on her bed and cried again. Her life was over. Her beloved turned out to be not only a traitor and a liar, but also a bastard. What is she supposed to do now? She had no job, no education, and no money. Moreover, she's pregnant. Jessica's voice came from behind the door. Anna, why don't we have some tea? The girl suddenly felt exhausted and thirsty. Her throat was dry. Shaking with dizziness and clinging to the walls, she walked to the kitchen and sat down on a stool. Jessica was already waiting for her with a homemade cherry pie and two cups of herbal tea. She silently placed a large piece of pie on her plate. This gesture reminded Anna of her mother. She covered her face with her palms, cried loudly and told Jessica everything. The woman only sighed heavily. What a bastard, Jessica said at the end of the story, came over and sincerely put her arms around Anna's shoulders. Then she looked into Anna's eyes and asked seriously, I hope you're not going to terminate your pregnancy. I don't know, 
the girl whispered. She didn't want to lie, but she couldn't make a decision. Don't even think of it, the woman told her. It's your baby. You have to keep the baby. Otherwise, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Anna thought about having a baby. Until now, it was just a simple fruit of love, an accidental fusion of male and female cells. She had not yet thought of it as a person who would grow and develop inside her. She imagined a baby with arms, legs and a funny face. She put her hand on her stomach as if trying to feel her future baby. Motherly love was awakening in her. In the morning, Jessica knocked on Anna's door and, without waiting for permission to enter, opened the door, walked to the window and opened the thick curtain. Why are you still in bed? Go for a walk. It's good for you and the baby, she commanded loudly. Anna wasn't even mad at Jessica. She knew that the woman wished nothing but the best for her. Listen, the woman said. I talked to my niece. She works as a manager for a cleaning company, and she'll help you get a job there. She says the salary is decent and the conditions are acceptable. What do you think? Anna jumped out of bed and hugged the woman gratefully. She immediately accepted the job offer. The orders were different, both difficult and easy. But customers often thanked the girl with generous tips. Today, Anna had to work at the house in the suburbs. The bus took her to the right stop. Anna looked around. There was a sense of peace and tranquility here. After the city noise, it seemed that someone suddenly turned off the volume. It felt so calm and peaceful here. The client's house was not far from the bus stop. It was a modern two-story mansion with a tidy territory around it. Anna pushed the intercom button to the right of the high iron gate, but no one answered. The girl waited for a while and pushed the button again. A heavy breathing came from the intercom. She heard groaning, and then the muffled sound of a falling body. At the same time, she heard a click that indicated that the gate lock was opening. Anna realized that something had happened. She quickly entered the yard and ran to the front door. It was locked. Looking around, the girl saw an open window. She wasn't sure about what she was doing, but still decided to climb through the window. What if someone needed help? Without thinking twice, Anna got into the house and rushed to find out what had happened. A young man was lying on the tiled floor near the front door. The girl bent down and shook him by the shoulders, trying to bring him to his senses. He was unconscious. Anna couldn't even hear him breathe. There was weird white foam on his pale lips. Anna put her ear to his chest and heard no heartbeat. Anxiety seized her. Was he dead? What is she supposed to do now? I need an ambulance. The girl dialed the emergency service number and quickly explained the situation. The operator calmly listened to her, asked her about the right address, and informed her that the paramedics were on their way. Anna looked at the owner of the house lying on the floor. Oh my gosh, he's so young. I hope the paramedics get here in time and save him, she thought. She suddenly remembered the instructions of her school teacher, who had once demonstrated the heart massage techniques on a mannequin. Okay. Sharp presses on the lower sternum, a hundred times a minute. Deep, mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing after five presses. This fragile girl focused and began to act. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale. She repeated again and again. Her arms were already trembling, but she selflessly continued trying to revive the stranger. It was only two or three minutes, but it seemed like an eternity to her. The man suddenly breathed and opened his eyes. He stared into the face of the girl bent over him. Are you an angel? He whispered suddenly. No, I'm Anna, she smiled. Her heart was beating frantically and seemed about to jump out of her chest. Nervous trembling engulfed her whole body. However, the joy of saving a human life overpowered all other emotions. Finally, she heard the siren of an ambulance pulling up. Two paramedics quickly entered the house. What happened? One of them asked while examining the patient. Anna quickly described everything that had happened. Are you sure his heart wasn't beating? The paramedic asked. Anna described in detail how she had managed to bring the patient back to life. Well done, you did everything right, he praised Anna. Meanwhile, the paramedics gave the guy an injection, put an oxygen mask on him, and did a cardiogram. At some point, the front door opened, and a young woman suddenly entered the house. She looked like a model on the cover of a popular magazine. Beautiful hair, an elegant dress, and an extremely expensive bag. 
Anna had once seen such a bag in one of the stores at the shopping center. Its price exceeded the girl's annual budget. Paul, my goodness, what has happened? She rushed to the man who was already on a stretcher. Doctor, I'm his wife. What's wrong with him? Heart attack, the doctor answered briefly. I can't say anything else right now. We'll examine him at the hospital. Oh my gosh, why? she exclaimed. <laughs> then she started crying and covered her face with her hands. But when the ambulance left, she suddenly turned to Anna and arrogantly asked, Are you the cleaning lady? Yes, Anna replied fearfully. Then what are you waiting for? Go ahead and clean the house, the woman ordered rudely, fixing her hair. Anna was shocked by such an abrupt change in her behavior, wondering at the calmness of the young woman, who could have become a widow just half an hour ago. This rude lady took a shower, made a cup of coffee and relaxed in the living room, talking to someone on the phone. Anna heard some phrases from her conversation. It didn't work out. Our plan failed. Yeah, I put poison in his coffee. I did it according to your instructions. Well, what else could I do? He's in the hospital right now. Don't worry. His business will be mine anyway. But now we need another plan. Anna quietly went into the kitchen. Had she gotten it right? Or had she just imagined it? Anyway, it was none of her business. Thoughts about the mysterious conversation didn't leave her mind until night. The next day was her day off. She woke up with a strange, uneasy feeling and immediately remembered the reason for her anxiety. After thinking a little more, Anna went to the hospital where the guy had been taken. For some reason, she felt responsible for his fate. She wanted to make sure that he was okay now. But in front of the hospital room, she felt uncertainty again. Would this stranger believe her? Still, Anna entered the room. Paul looked weak, but when he saw Anna, he rejoiced and waved at her friendly. Hello, Anna, my savior, he smiled. The girl looked embarrassed. I didn't think you remembered my name. But you saved my life. I thought I was in paradise, and a beautiful angel would meet me at the entrance. Noticing the embarrassment on the face of his shy savior, he immediately added in a serious tone, Pardon the inappropriate joke, my name is Paul. Very nice to meet you, the girl smiled sincerely. How are you doing? What do the doctors say? The man said that he was getting better, but the doctors detected traces of a strange drug in his blood. However, Paul had no idea how this drug got into his body. The girl liked this good-natured, cheerful guy. She thought about the conversation she had overheard again. What if he was really in danger? Anna realized that she would never forgive herself if something happened to Paul. She told the man everything she had heard yesterday at his house. Paul frowned. Anxiety and sadness appeared in his eyes. Thank you, Anna. I think you saved my life for the second time. It seemed to Anna that Paul wasn't surprised. Two years ago, he couldn't even think that such a thing was possible. Paul fell in love with beautiful Regina at first sight. He took her boldness and pushiness as a manifestation of a strong personality and the bright individuality of an extraordinary woman. He felt like he had finally found the woman he would spend the rest of his life with. Paul did not even have time to realize how soon the wedding ring appeared on his finger. But now selfishness and aggression dominated his wife's behavior. She wasn't interested in anything except expensive stores, beauty salons and vacations in exotic countries. All she wanted from her husband was money. She was not interested in his feelings, thoughts, expectations and dreams. Regina didn't want to hear anything about children. She didn't want to get fat, otherwise her new swimsuit would look bad. Paul's business flourished and profits increased, but the man was tormented by the disappointment of his false hopes. The beauty of his wife no longer evoked in him the same emotions, and his mansion has not turned into a cozy family home full of love and warmth. This modest girl who saved his life yesterday was very different from Regina. Anna's pleasant appearance was not too bright, but her friendly smile and kind eyes charmed the man. And he hadn't seen this slight blush of embarrassment in anyone for a long time. Anna still had a softness and natural femininity. Anna, I would be happy if you would visit me again, he said, looking into her sincere eyes. I promise I will visit you again, she said. When the girl left, Paul called the head of the security department of his company, Andrew. He knew he could trust him. Andrew listened to Paul's request and immediately warned him. Paul, it is possible to install video cameras in your house secretly, but I will be limited in time. 
so I cannot guarantee that I will install them in every room. Paul agreed. Two days later, on her next day off, Anna went to the hospital again to see her new friend. For some reason, she wanted to see him irresistibly. She wanted to know if he was getting better, to help him and look into his kind grey eyes. Anna, come in, I'm glad to see you again, Paul exclaimed. The girl smiled, walked over to his hospital bed and placed a bag of fruit on the nightstand. I brought you some fruit, you need some vitamins now. Paul was pleased with such care. Only his mother took care of him like that, but unfortunately she passed away long ago. Regina still hasn't visited him in the hospital. She only called to find out if he was alive. There was a knock on the door and Andrew entered the hospital room with his laptop. Hello, here. There's only one videotape so far. Take a look, Paul. Anna, excuse me, I don't leave, please. I'd like to talk to you some more, Paul asked. The girl smiled and sat down next to his bed, while Paul turned on the laptop and watched the short video. The laptop screen showed his wife letting some young man into the house. It was clear from their kisses and hugs that their relationship was serious. Regina took the young man into the bedroom, and about an hour later, her lover left the house. Paul took a closer look at him and exclaimed, Well, it makes sense now. I know him. This is Daniel. He works for my competitors. They wanted to purchase my business, but I refused. Anna flinched hearing this name and involuntarily looked at the screen. I know him too, she said quietly and sadly. Paul looked at her in surprise. When his faithful friend Andrew left, he asked, Would you like to tell me? For some reason, Anna trusted the man she had met only a few days ago and told him everything, and she didn't want to leave his side ever again. Anna's story was very trivial, but Paul felt truly sorry for this naive girl. That bastard Daniel acted very cruelly towards her. The chance to meet such a sincere girl is extremely rare, and Paul didn't want to miss this precious gift of fate. He pulled the girl closer and let her cry on his shoulder. And Paul didn't wait for any additional evidence of his wife's infidelity. He immediately filed for divorce. Regina filed a lawsuit for the division of property. On the appointed day, Anna came to court to morally support Paul. He was still weak after the poisoning and said that her presence helped him feel better. Over the past weeks, they had become very close to each other. They could talk for hours about everything. Their communication was sincere and relaxed, and both of them didn't want to part. Anna realized that this man had become very dear to her, but she was afraid of this feeling, for she was afraid of being deceived again. Several people were already waiting in the courtroom. Regina was sitting there, looking triumphant. Daniel was sitting nearby. He was surprised to see Anna, but Paul was happy to see her. He waved at her and invited her to sit down. The lawyers were reading some long documents for a long time. Then they were talking to each other and the judge. Anna didn't understand much of what was going on, but she guessed that Regina wanted to get half of her ex-husband's property and business, and Daniel was trying to help her do it. Looking at him now, Anna felt nothing but disgust. How could she have loved him before? How could she have suffered so much after their breakup? Now she saw just a vile man who was willing to lie and even poison people just because of money. In fact, Regina and Daniel suited each other. After everything that happened, Regina still dared to claim the property of her husband, who earned it all with his intelligence and hard work. The judge suddenly asked if anyone wanted to make any comments on the case. Anna raised her hand decisively. I'd like to add a few words. The judge was surprised but allowed the girl to speak. I would like to say that Regina has no right to Paul's property. She cheated on her husband with this man. Anna pointed at Daniel. This man is a liar and a scoundrel. He deceived me and left me pregnant, and then started a relationship with his competitor's wife to get his business. Everyone fell silent. Daniel pretended that Anna was not talking about someone else, not about him, but Regina looked at the girl with eyes full of hatred. Only Paul couldn't take his admiring gaze off Anna. This shy girl had dared to do such a brave gesture for his sake. The judge asked Anna in a tired voice, But what do I need this information for? Anna quietly pinched herself, trying to calm down. To see their true faces and make the right decision, she muttered quietly. The judge slammed the folder shut and pronounced, The court retires in the deliberation room to make a final decision. Paul walked up to Anna and hugged her gently. The girl was about to cry. I'm sorry, I must have ruined everything, as she whispered. 
No, what are you talking about? The man exclaimed, looking her straight in the eyes. I just realized what an amazing girl you are. I love you, and I will be happy if you agree to be my wife. Anna could no longer hold back her tears, but now they were tears of happiness. She hugged the man tightly, closed her eyes, and whispered, I'd be happy to be your wife. I love you too. Paul was not worried about the court's decision. Regina knew a lot about the fashion industry, but she didn't know anything about jurisprudence. She was sure she'd get everything she wanted, and she'd probably already convinced Daniel of that. However, she didn't take into account the fact that when she married Paul two years ago, Paul already owned the company and the real estate. In other words, all of Paul's assets were obtained before the marriage. Everything belonged to him by law, and there was nothing to divide. Therefore, he generously allowed his unfaithful ex-wife to keep all the gifts that he gave her, but nothing more. A month later, Paul and Anna got married and were looking forward to the birth of their baby. But one day, Regina unexpectedly showed up at Paul's office. She came in a sexy dress and with bright red lips. Hello, my love, how are you doing? She said, trying to sound sexy. Paul only grinned, looking at his ex-wife's pathetic attempts to seduce him. Everything is going great without you, he said, not hiding his annoyance. Regina continued her speech. Look, things didn't work out well for us. I've wasted almost three years of my life with you, but ended up with almost no money. Paul was shocked at her insolence. Be grateful I didn't go to the police. Come on, I didn't do anything wrong, Regina said in an innocent voice. <laughs> Besides, you took all the stuff and jewellery I gave you. Oh, and what about a brand new car? Doesn't it make you happy? Paul said. The woman could hardly control her emotions. Anger overwhelmed her. Honey, my car needs to be fueled and washed, and it requires money, she said. At first, Paul wanted to ask why her lover wasn't supporting her, but he decided not to hurt her even more. He already knew that right after the divorce, Daniel had disappeared from Regina's life forever. Snap! Maybe you should finally start thinking about getting a job, Paul asked. Regina's patience was running out. Her attempt to evoke compassion in her former husband failed, but she tried to continue the conversation calmly. That's exactly why I'm here. Give me a job, please. We don't have any available positions right now, the man replied confidently. Regina resentfully turned away to the window. But actually, you know, I can hire you as a cleaning lady, Paul suddenly said. Are you kidding me? Are you trying to humiliate me? The woman instantly got mad. No, but this way you can prove that you've changed. Fine, I'll take this job. I don't have any other options anyway. Paul was surprised by her decision, but he didn't want to waste any more time with her. The man sent Regina to the HR department and headed home. Anna and little John were waiting for him there. Now, his mansion was not just a house, but a cozy family home. Now, his loving, tender wife, his little funny son, and the pleasant smell of homemade dinner waited for him every day. Paul hired a nanny to help Anna so that she could have more free time. This Saturday, the couple were going to the theater together. Anna was very nervous, leaving her son alone with the nanny for the first time. She instructed the nanny for the tenth time and asked her to call or send messages often. It had been two hours since the play had started, but the nanny still hadn't called and her phone was disconnected. Anna was noticeably nervous. Let's go home, Paul said to his wife. When they got home, the nanny and the baby were nowhere to be found. Oh my God, John, where is John? Anna exclaimed. Paul dialed the nanny's number again, but it was off. After that, the man immediately called the police. The nanny, Bridget, was running down the narrow alleyway to the place where the car would pick her up. The baby was heavy, and it was preventing her from running faster. Why did I agree to commit this crime? It's a lot of money, but what will happen next? Bridget mentally repented. Just a few seconds later, the baby began to cry loudly. Damn, just what I needed, the woman thought. Shut up, she threatened the baby and squeezed him hard with her hands. John began to cry even louder. Shut up, she shouted and shook him in despair. The boy would not calm down. Suddenly, a huge black dog jumped out and, baring its teeth, blocked the woman's path. She stopped in shock. Bridget had been afraid of dogs since childhood. She tried to step back, but the dog jumped closer and barked. Fear paralyzed the woman. She clutched the infant and couldn't move. This is the end, she thought. 
The siren of a police car could be heard at the end of the street. It was useless to run. Paul and Anna pulled up in their car. The young mother ran out of the car and rushed to her baby. Only after clutching the crying John to her did she exhale and start crying, kissing his little hands. The black dog was jumping happily around them. The police officers handcuffed Bridget and put her in the car. A curious neighbor came out of his house to see what had happened. Do you know whose dog this is? Paul asked, stroking the dog gratefully. It's Samuel's dog. Its name is Bruce, the man answered. A young family with a baby used to live with him. Bruce was always by their side. But then they moved to another city, and the dog stayed here with the elderly Samuel. Unfortunately, Samuel recently got sick and died, so now Bruce is all alone. We feed him, but we can't adopt him, because we have a cat. Bruce seemed to realize that this was a conversation about him. He came closer and sat down in front of Paul. The dog looked intently into Paul's eyes. Bruce, would you like to live with us? Paul asked. The dog whined approvingly. Well then, get in the car, he said, and opened the car door. What a good boy, Anna smiled and stroked the dog's head. Bridget didn't even try to justify herself or lie. She said that Regina had hired her to steal the baby and promised to pay her generously. Police officers immediately arrested Paul's ex-wife, and soon she pleaded guilty. Yes, it was my idea to steal that baby, she shouted in a rage. I only wanted justice. I've wasted so many years, but I don't have anything else besides expensive clothes and diamonds. I'd give them the baby back. I just needed the money. She panicked and even confessed that she had tried to poison her ex-husband and said it was the idea of her lover, Daniel. Now they were facing a significant jail sentence. Paul went down to the kitchen. A soft music was playing there. Anna was cooking something for dinner. Paul approached his wife from behind, gently embraced her and kissed her neck. She froze, catching her breath, stopped chopping vegetables, turned around and kissed her husband too. John was playing in the corner of the kitchen. Bruce settled down next to the boy and watched him curiously. Sweetheart, the man whispered, looking into his spouse's eyes. Maybe we can have a few more babies. The young woman laughed, snuggling up to Paul. All right, just let there be at least one girl among them.